We're going to talk about the first law of thermodynamics now, and it pretty much concerns why there's no such thing as 100% efficiency. We're going to identify sources of heat loss in any working system, and relate the law of conservation of energy to the first law of thermodynamics. Okay, let's review. The law of conservation of energy states that energy cannot be created or destroyed. It only changes phase. So that means that the total energy before must equal the total energy after within a closed system. However, any time energy changes form, some energy is always lost. This is why things aren't efficient. There's always some kind of heat loss often due to heat. So if we just think of our swinging bowling ball, it will swing back, and then a little less, and then a little less, and then a little less, and eventually it will come to a stop. So that's what I'm saying when we're changing forms of energy. There's always some work done, and we don't have this perfect system. If it were 100% efficient, it would swing back and forth forever. But there's no such thing as a 100% efficient system. That's why, oops, so oftentimes, this is an adapter. It converts the type of electricity that's found in power lines into the type of electricity your phone needs to charge itself. It's converting forms of energy. But if you've ever touched these after they've been plugged in for a while, they get warm. That's an example of heat loss. That's taking away from the efficiency of this transfer. Matter of fact, anything with one of these kind of adapters, they're called, is always drawing power, even if they're not plugged into the phone. So if this is plugged in, but this is not plugged into anything, this guy right here is still doing its job changing the energy form. So these guys suck energy without doing anything. They're very wasteful. However, plugs that look like this, that just don't have an adapter, those things like lamps and stuff, they don't take energy when they're not on. Alright, the first law of thermodynamics tells us that the total internal energy of a system depends on the amount of work done by the system and the heat lost. So total internal energy, work done, minus lost heat. Sorry, this should be plus. So, total internal energy we know already as input energy. If it's like gas and you've got tank of gasoline, it could also be, sometimes you'll call words like available energy, just total energy, requires anything that has to do with takes in, needs, all of these words that have to do with taking in something or amount needed tells you that number is your internal energy. Work done could be also output. Heat loss could be expels. It gives off. Releases. These are all words that say energy is being given off that's not work. Other than that, this formula is actually really easy. It's just adding and subtracting. Let's try some. Heat engine has a total available. So see if you can match up the numbers underneath the formula. Here's how you solve it. How much work can be done? This is our question. 1,000 joules of heat is given off. That tells us 1,000. Total available, 5,000. Some of you can see the answer already. 
in order for this to equal that, it has to equal 4,000. So our total after work done, usable work plus waste, equals before conservation of energy. You can also look at it like this. This is our available, this is our U, this is our work done, and this is our waste. Energy can go this way, or it can go that way. But combine these two, and it always has to come up here. 5,000, 1,000, this must be 4,000. Here's a piston cycle. Just draw this diagram uh, really small on your page. This is our this is how our engines work. Gas enters. This is our available energy. The piston raises. Things things go up and down, and they turn the crankshaft that turns your wheels. The gas ignites by a spark plug, which does work and pushes down the piston and then the exhaust or waste heat leaves, that's our Q. So these two have to equal this one. So draw this and have these parts um, kind of labeled like I do. Okay, example number two. What if we combine the first law of thermodynamics and efficiency? We want to know what is the efficiency of a system that takes in 500 joules of energy while losing 200 joules while work is done. It takes in 500, loses 200. Well, we need to know work over the total input times 100 to find efficiency. Well, but I don't know work yet, so I have to find the Q work equals 500 equals work plus 200 so this is 300 and now I can solve over here 300 over 500 times 100 equals 60 percent efficient so that's where we're combining the two ideas probably see one of those on the test